Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about some of the subtle finesse fishing tricks that will help you catch more fish this winter. I spend the vast majority of my time focused on power fishing techniques. You guys know I love to crank, swim bait, throw larger profiles, fast moving baits, jerk baits, top waters, but there is a time and a place to finesse. And today I want to talk to you about some of the subtle things that I do that are different, that I really think makes a difference in the winter time. When the water gets cold, you start getting less bites than you do in the spring and the fall, but you can catch some really big fish. So the details become critical. Understanding how different baits move in cold water, understanding little changes that you can make to your baits to impact the action is everything. Because again, you're fishing for less bites overall. So fooling as many fish as possible, that's important. Number one, I've got four baits or four styles of bait here for you that I'm gonna focus on because these are the four that I personally fish with the most in the wintertime. I mean, there's plenty of people throwing shaky heads, Nico rigs, all sorts of different things, but a small swim bait, a tube, a drop shot, and a Ned rig are the ones that you're going to find me using most often. First off is just the tiny swim bait. This is a Dirty Jigs Guppy Head, one eighth ounce with a one aught hook. So one eighth, one aught with a 2.8 inch Kitek on it. That's that fat swing impact Kitek. That little head right there has caught me literally thousands of bass. It is just a tiny little package. The only change I make is sometimes I throw it on a little underspin instead of the bare head. But if you came to me and said, Matt, you get to make one cast and you have to catch a fish, and we're not telling you where you're going to make this cast, pick your bait, <laughs> it would be a 2.8 Kitek. You wouldn't even have to tell me what species I was fishing for. Bass, crappie, trout, you name it, everything will eat that little 2.8 Kitek. It is just a deadly bait. So if I'm gonna pick up one finesse little swim bait, to try and catch some fish in the winter, that is my little setup. Pro Blue Red Pearl is that one right there. Electric Shad is another one. Those really subtle, natural, minnow type colors are what you're going to see me throwing. But I can literally narrow down the entire finesse swim bait thing in the heart of winter to that right there. How was that for simple? Now let's talk drop shot next. We'll go drop shot, then tubes, and then Ned, because Ned's the biggest category. That's where I have the most day in and day out finesse fishing confidence, besides the swim bait, of course. Drop shotting in the winter time is a whole different ball game than drop shotting in any other season. Uh, most people drop shot, they work those baits a lot, right? And the winter time is all about slowing down. If I'm going to pick up a drop shot, I do it one of two times. I either do it because I saw something on my electronics, right? I look at, I glance down at my 2D sonar and I see there's a bass under the boat. Well, pick up a drop shot, drop it down there, see if it'll eat it. The other place that you're really going to see me focus in on a drop shot is around standing cover, i.e. dock pilings, right? Dock pilings, standing timber, things of that nature. I love, if I'm going to be around docks, I love to throw a drop shot around docks in the winter. One of my good, good friends, Ross, back on Clear Lake, would hammer fish on a drop shot. I'd love to power fish, he'd love to drop shot. And on the days that I was doing great, those would be harder days for him. The days where I couldn't catch anything, that guy was smashing them. Drop shot in docks. And that always fascinated me because it was the days where the reaction bite just wasn't happening that he would be smashing them. The key to that cold winter drop shotting is dead action. What I mean by that is I don't wanna see a worm doing this in the water. 
in general, if you asked me to pick my top five favorite drop shot baits, they're all baits that I can use with exaggerated movements. Some baits you want to shake them super subtle and they'll just sit there and quiver. A lot of baits, if you pop them, they get a really exaggerated rise and fall. Those are the baits that I like day in and day out, but not in the heart of winter. The heart of winter is a whole nother ball game. And here is the deal, because this will make all the difference for you. If you drop shot in the winter time, one, you need to work your bait less. Let it sit. Work it a little and let it sit. Little bumps. Let it just spend time literally just sitting there. That's how you get the maximum number of bites. Let it hover in front of that fish, just dead. Now, in order for a bait to do that, there's two more things you need. Number two is going to be the right hook. And number three is a bait that's capable of doing that. And this is what people miss. So the hook, I use a very specific hook. Owner Mosquito Light, and almost always either a size two or a size one. I buy them in these bulk packs because I use them so much. Uh, but seriously, this one hook, an Owner Mosquito Light, is a very light wire hook. And it was years ago that I realized the importance of the hook. And actually how I learned was I was up on the Great Lakes fishing around some zebra mussel beds, which is not hard to do on the Great Lakes. And I noticed that some hooks, I would get snagged constantly, and other hooks, specifically the Mosquito Light, I was almost never snagged. So when I got home, I started playing with hooks in the water, and I realized that the weight of the hook itself, one bait would sort of hover and float, the next one, the weight of the hook, when you would pause it, would stand that worm up and sink it. And it would literally go down and stick to the bottom, and I'd snag up. That's everything in winter. You want the lightest wire hook that you can get away with. I use that Mosquito Light because when I'm slow working my bait and I stop, it's the slowest fall. And then the worm itself is the last key component. This is the STH Lollipop, okay? I grabbed this worm. Oh, I flipped it the wrong way. Don't all fall out. There we go. Should have opened them that way. This bait I went with specifically, not particularly this color. This is just straight black. But this bait, so I take my size two. Let me pull one out. And I don't need to set up a whole drop shot for you. Most of you guys know exactly how to do that. If you don't, we have dedicated videos for that. You can just search for them. But take that hook, stab it through the nose of that bait, just like so, okay? Now that is going to sit in the water. The reason I grabbed this specific bait is that not all worms are created equal. This is a very neutrally buoyant worm, which means that when I work it, see it's got that wider little tail section, it's going to have some good action, but when I stop, the whole package is just going to sit there flat in the water. Yes, eventually that hook is going to give us a nose down pull, but the bait itself wants to truly stay level. That's critical for drop shotting in the winter. I can't tell you how many worms we've played with in underwater footage that are great baits in the summertime because you're working them aggressively. You're really popping them. But if you go to work that same bait slow, work it and pause, give it a little slack, and you'll realize if you have the wrong hook, she's head down, headed to the bottom. But a lot of worms, if you keep them on a tight line, the worm itself goes straight down, parallel to the line. They look horrible. You can't slow work them. They don't work. So this bait in particular is one of those baits that is very neutrally buoyant. I'm sure there's some other good options, but this is the one that I found that works really well for me that will sit dead flat in the water, even on the paws. And that will get you more bites. I really, today I'm trying to keep it very simple, just a few baits, but I want you to understand those subtle things that matter. 
work your drop shot less. Use a hook that won't cause the bait to, to be messed up. And then use a bait that will sit properly in the water. And 100% you will catch more drop shot fish during the cold water months. Now the tube. The tube, there's basically two ways that I go. Uh, this is my main tube. The net bait. STH, the four inch tube. You guys have seen us throw these for years. Now this is the four inch. It actually comes at a two and a half also, which I throw a ton. But you guys are very familiar with these tubes if you watched any of our tube videos, right? They're a fat body, double dipped tube. I use these a lot in winter. Uh, now every single one of my tubes gets a different hook. It's a whole nother rabbit hole. I'm not even going to go down that path with you today but I will in the video description. You know, our video descriptions, for those of you that aren't familiar, below the video, click the three little dots, open the description. You'll find more information in the description than you do in the video itself. We link the, the tube that we're talking about. We link the exact color. We link the exact hook that we use for it. And we do that for everything, rods, reels, baits, all of it. There's more information in the descriptions than there are in the video themselves. So make sure that you're using that tool. But going back to the tube, the tube itself, the four inch double dipped thick bodied tube, I'm typically going to use uh, when I'm fishing deeper. And it's because I can hide a much larger head in this tube. I can put a half or even a three quarter ounce goby style head, that's a, a fat head into here and it will hold it really well uh, and I can fish that in deep water and be very connected to that tube. If that, now the two and a half, the two and a half, I typically fish shallower. I typically fish with an eighth ounce. I keep it really light. Uh, and this is more of just, uh, I almost fish it like I do a Ned rig. It's just interchangeable. If I'm seeing everybody throw a Ned, I'll switch over to a tube. But day in and day out, I lean to the Ned first in the smaller size. But the last one, this is a dry creek. And there are a few companies that make this style of tube, but this style is called the tournament tube. Look at the difference in body size, okay? Not just the, the size of the tails or any of that. Let me break them up a little bit so you get a better picture here, but look at the body size difference in the tube. See how thin this is? These tubes, really do shine in the winter time. And I tend to do my best in clear water with them. I don't know why. I tend to fish them with a little bit lighter weight. Uh, if I was only gonna pick one, it would probably be either a 3 16th or a quarter. Like this is the in-between, right? This is my bigger, fatter, more aggressive tube. This is my traditional slow dragging that tube on the bottom. The tournament tube thing, works and then here's the subtle thing I wanted to teach you. It's a rabbit hole that we're not going down today. I say that a lot, but it really is its own animal. Dead sticking baits in the winter time. Not even gonna go all the way down the path with you. I'm just going to tell you I've had remarkable success fishing a tournament style tube with no movement. Pitch them. Now again, you have to know there's fish there, right? So either I've already caught fish on the spot. That's the beauty of winter. Once you find fish, if you just go down the shore fishing and you catch one here and you catch one down around that next corner, if the conditions don't really change, you can come back a week, two weeks, three weeks later and catch fish in those same places. Fish aren't jamming all around most of the time. The only thing that'll really make a move is big weather changes, super cold, big warm ups, or a big flush of water that causes the lake to rise. Then the fish will move. Otherwise, they're very sedentary. So once I've identified places that I know have fish, I can take a tournament tube, throw it into that area, maybe pull it a couple of times, but then I literally just let it sit. And I'll let it sit five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. If I know that they're there, again, rabbit hole, but I've let tubes sit for minutes. It's amazing if they're very pressured fish, like guys in Southern California, San Diego lakes, right? Your fish get thrashed. 
guys on the TVA, your fish get thrashed in the spring. Uh, and there's plenty of other places, you know, OH Ivy right now. Those fish are getting thrashed, man. Places like that where fish really have a lot of pressure on them, dead sticking can be remarkable because the fish are, they kind of get used to things flying by, right? There goes a crankbait. There goes an A-ring. There goes a crankbait. Here comes a jig, right? They get used to all that fast moving stuff and they'll just start staying away from it. Letting a bait just sit and soak can really get those fish because they're not used to things that aren't real just sitting in their space. Uh, again, not a fast technique, not a technique I recommend for every day, certainly not a technique for trying to find fish, but if you found them and you can't catch them, try taking a tube, pitching it down there and just letting it sit a while. Let it sit for 30 seconds and then give it a little bump. Let it sit for 30 more seconds. Give it a little bump. Do that a few times. If it works, you've now got something to stick in your back pocket. If it doesn't work, what'd you do? You wasted a couple minutes, no harm, no foul. But the tube in the winter is a really interesting option. And then last is Ned rigs. Uh, I've said many times that if I could only have one Ned rig, uh, it's a Z-Man Finesse TRD. Uh, green pumpkin goby, you know, green pumpkin, a little bit of purple in there. It's just deadly. I know that I can just go out and catch fish on that. But in the winter time, I've said it over and over and over, I swear by purple. I love those purple baits. Um, I talked about this one recently. That X-Zone Ned Zone in that violet color is just so deadly. Another one, the missile baits, the Ned Bomb. That guy there, MM3. Just those purple baits. The reason I chose these two specifically, I love the Robo Worm too, but I chose each of these because of their subtle action. This one will do it no matter what. This one has to be rigged properly, okay? But the subtle thing that makes these baits so different, one color, again, purple, I just have a ton of confidence in it. This one, if I just hold this thing in my hand, look how this thing will waggle around, right? It's just moving all over the place. It does the same thing, but even more subtle, subsurface. You can pitch it out there and just barely move it and it just has a little waggle. Now not, we don't want a lot of movement in the winter, but I'm not talking about hopping this thing and getting big, harsh movements out of it. I'm just talking about it sitting there and when a fish comes up to look at it and they push a little wave of water, that's what happens when something moves underwater. And all of a sudden that thing just gets a little subtle waggle to it. I mean, it just, it's got that alive vibe to it. The other one is the missile, the Ned Bomb. It's got this flat tail on it and you can get very, very good movement out of this one too. You can get it just barely moving it and it'll just get a little waggle to it. But with this one, you have to rig it the right way. So I want the flat side flat the same way that my hook is coming out. I don't want it turned where the skinny way is in line with the hook, okay? I want the flat side in line with the hook. That way, every time I make a movement, it's pushing the whole wide side of that in the water and then it'll it'll wanna sway. Uh, but two Ned rigs that come in a really deadly color and just have that subtle movement and that can make a big difference. Again, if everybody's throwing a Ned, sometimes I just go and throw a tube but I have so much confidence in that net itself. And those are little subtle things. See, you'll also see the head design, right? Those are both the same head, but black is my standard. You get some color to the water, some stain. Going to that chartreuse can make a big difference. But all in all, I catch a lot of good ones on those purple baits in the winter time. Uh, last thing is rods. Let's talk about rods real quick. And this is for the budget guy. Now, I'm about to pick up a very not budget rod to make my point, but follow me on this. Uh, again, everything is about subtleties in the winter. It's the little things that make the big differences. It's the, you, you get to the boat ramp and you talk to a guy, one guy got no bites, one guy caught one fish, and one guy doesn't want to tell the truth that he caught 20, right? Little differences. They were all probably doing similar things, but one guy has adapted to the cold, he's fishing slow, 
He's dialed in his color selection, his bait selection. He knows how to work them. That guy's smashing. That guy who's got his summertime shaky head and he's throwing it up the bank and pulling it out. I mean, he might get a bite, he might catch a fish, but you're definitely not maximizing your time on the water. Now let's talk rods real quick and then we'll wrap this up. Finesse is one of those places where you can truly benefit from sensitivity. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world because you're not moving these baits quickly. So the bites tend to not be reaction bites. They tend to be feeding bites, which means they're just gonna come up and eat it. About the only time that you're gonna be working one of these baits in cold water and feel a dong, you know, one of those hard bites is if there were more than one fish there, there's a little bit of competition. One of them will smash it. If it's just a single fish and you end up in front of them, they'll just swim up and just grab onto that thing and it, it's like a wet sock. You're pulling it along and it just gets heavier. So sensitivity can make all the difference in the world. This is about as high end of a combo as you can get and it is hands down one of my favorite finesse combos. This is a G Loomis NRX Plus. It's the 822, it's the drop shot rod paired to a Stella. I mean, it does not get more high end braided line to fluorocarbon leader you're not going to get more high end than that you're not going to get more sensitive than that but there's a trick that you can use because a lot of people this is out of budget right it's just not an option for a lot of people uh, you need something affordable but you don't want to be missing half your bites in the winter here is the trick uh, now here we're talking, you know, a couple hundred bucks for the combo, roughly. Uh, and you could do this for even less money. When you're choosing a spinning rod for finesse fishing in the winter time, if you can go braid to leader instead of straight fluoro, that will make a huge difference. Uh, but fluoro can be okay too. But what I want you to do is I want you to select a rod that is a little bit longer somewhere between seven foot two and seven foot six is ideal now i like to drop shot on shorter rods you know six eight six ten up to like seven foot uh, i like to do a lot of these techniques on smaller rods but if you're going budget going the other way is huge here's why you think of a bait like a little tiny kitek or a drop shot or a ned rig as weighing nothing but on these longer rods, they tend to have a much longer, thinner tip section, okay? See how soft this tip section is? Follow me on this. Even a Ned Rig, when I'm pulling a Ned Rig across the bottom, you're going to see that rod deflect, okay? It's gonna have a little bit of load as I'm pulling that Ned Rig across the bottom. And I'll see it load a little bit more as it comes into a rock and then it'll pop loose. Load a little bit more, going through some pebbles, pop loose. Okay, but it's going to have a little bit of load to it, just naturally. It's just what it weighs, dragging on the bottom. Forget sensitivity. Now, spend more money for a more sensitive rod if you can. Braided line if you can. But if you can't, go to the longer rod. And the reason why is that the longer the rod, the more exaggerated this will be and the easier it is to see. Once that rod is loaded and you're pulling it across the bottom, pay attention to exactly what that looks like, okay? I'm bumping over rocks, coming back, bumping over, coming back. All of a sudden, if it looks like this, something has happened. Whether you feel something, whether I felt a tick, whether I felt the fish pull or not, the second it loads farther than what the bait should be, I'm either getting snagged or a fish has it. And I'm gonna pull on that a little bit. It should pop loose of a snag or start to load up on a fish. So again, you literally don't even have to feel them to hook a lot of your subtle bites. Just go to a longer rod and down in the video description, I'll link you a really good option for that. That'll load up really subtle like that. and. What you end up doing is tip watching. So I learned this as a guide because as a guide for years, I'm not fishing, I'm watching people fish, right? And I would yell out your bit or set the hook or you just missed one or whatever, right? 
But that comes by watching the tips of everybody's rods that are on the boat. I'm not fish, I'm not holding the rod, I can't tell what's going on. But I watch every tip on the boat and I've got a feel for what they look like. And the second there's more, I'm yelling, set the hook, somebody's hooking a fish and they don't even know that they were bit. It's visual, it's tip watching, but it will make all the difference. I mean, you can double, triple, quadruple the number of fish that you're catching on a budget rod just by tip watching a longer rod. Makes a huge difference. Guys, again, this time of year, it's about the subtle things, right? It's the little differences that can make everything. Uh, down in the video description, I'll link all these baits, the rods, uh, in the order that we talked about them to make it really easy for you. But you can catch a lot of fish in the winter time finessing. You can catch a lot of fish power fishing. That's why I love to do it. But some days they're just not having it. You need to finesse. And these are the baits that I trust to do that. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.